So what I'm trying to say here is uh, my big question here, because my, my back, also my background is in studying Claude levi uh structuralism, which has something to do with simulation later, but I'm not going to mention that today. So my big question, the first question, does archaeology have to be a borrower? Can it be an originator? Um, I asked him the question because from the stratigraphy and every almost every theory and methods in archaeology borrowed from some other disciplines, uh, hard sciences or social theories, third, Almost nothing came originally, originally from, 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 from archaeology. So, but, but on the other hand, we see like a folk who use archaeology metaphorically, archaeology this and archaeology that, but they don't mean archaeology, they, they mean metaphorically, right? So that's my big question. So my presentation has four parts. You know, the first part I'm talking about, I will look at that, that, that I just stated, I asked a big question. The second part, I will look at the two papers. Uh, one on simulation, the other about, 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 um, about, <clears throat> about a uh, network. So the first paper is uh, dated by Ian Harder. Ian, Ian Harder dated in 1978. Uh, the other paper is by uh, my, my colleague in the University of Toronto Archaeology Department, Anthropology Department. They, they, they. So it's, it's called, uh, it's, it's, it, it was printed in 2015 in the same, I think in a similar session here in, in, in Siena. It's, called, it's, it's about a, a network. It's Peter uh, Berkowitz. So the, the two, I compared the paper, one is about simulation, the other about is about uh, about about uh, network. You can see they are pretty similar, but used in different terms. Okay, so so th those that th those two uh, graphs are from 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 Ian Hodder's paper. So in the paper, uh, I'm not going to the detail about his simulation, but the basic things about he, he talking about simulation is he used a lot of. Uh, what he called the random work uh, method. But random work method is basically it's a model of the modeling. So he put archaeologists himself in the field and he co in incorporated that, that, that process into the data modeling later. So that's in the 1978. So, that's uh, Peter's uh, Peter's work, you know. Uh, Peter's uh, network is a beautiful paper, and you know, it's very, very well written, and it's part, it was published. So, what what is about this paper is based on other data, art artifacts uh, distribution, then from artifact distribution to the other other type of data. So he used the network, but the, actually that paper is a simulation paper. He used a lot of simulation methods, very similar to what Ian Harder was doing. So the only thing is that he changed the term, right? Network. One of the reasons, of course, is network is the buzzword. So we have a change using a buzzword. So I, it's, 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 it shows an archaeologist mentality to follow the trend as opposed to in I mean, create a trend, so you network. But if you look at the network, you can see it's a very similar thing. The only thing it doesn't it doesn't have the, the random work things at, at all, uh, anymore. So is it is a progress? It's a it's, it's not a progress. That's a question to be asked. So because uh, I, I, we have a lot of colleagues in our institute they're doing the ph ph uh, philosophy of uh, uh, biology or, or, or physics, right? So that's one of the person. She actually uh, she she she's from the uh, University of Wisconsin. So that paper by that's a new book is going to publish next month. It's called uh, Model Behavior. It's called the Mice Modeling in 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 in, in, in the in, in biology. So what happened there is she she discovered this by Nicole Nelson. Nicole Nelson. She's from uh, University of Wisconsin. So. She studies the uh, animal modeling in biology, experimental biology. So she 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 did what we call the ethnographical work. You know, he stays she stays with uh, biologists. She lives with them and she recall how they work. So they talk about a lot about complexity. When they publish the, their scientific paper, they use the com the word complexity in all the scientific reports as the ontological complexity. But in reality, she found out. When they actually in the real work, when they, when they were talking about complexity, they were talking about how complex their own work is. You know, so they are confusing what is being a research process and a research product. So that's what that's a this, and also the other one is from our institute, Michael Miller. He, he's a philosophy of physics. You know, that's he's a new new, new paper published called the Hack Theorem. Apparently, basically he, he studies uh, quantum field theory in modeling in there. So what happened there is. They found that something is pretty rare in physics, which is uh, the, 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 the physics, that the mathematics in, in quantum field theory is pretty, pretty bad. It's pretty, pretty uh, inconsistent. In, in concern, the math is bad, but the experimental results are often good, often good. So that's something is rare in physics, but now it becomes more important physics. Physics become more localized. 
So that's the two, two things. And that new book is about quantum physics. It's, it's, it's uh, David, uh, David Kaiser's uh, drawing. There's a part, it's about how, how, how quantum physics depends on modeling using diagram, but Feynman diagram is famous, right? So basically, the reason is a lot of those things, a lot of those work, those uh, physicists and biologists, when they do their works, they base a lot on the, their classy knowledge. So they develop a kind of theory, a kind of model, the way of working. And those kind of knowledge work into, into in what happened is work into archaeology and other things. But archaeology, because we, we, we focus so much on using other people's theory. And we don't use we using our own classy knowledge. So what happened is we just imitate other people, right? So, so if we look at the early 90s, there's another uh, archaeologist who focusing on the, uh, on the uh, simulation. And he said, what are simulations? He basically, simulations are just more than statics modeling. It can, doesn't have to use mathematics. So what happens is physics can, be, I mean, a simulation can be a lot of things. So it doesn't have to be determinist. So which means simulation is a specific idea that can be specifically developed from within the archaeology without the help of other people. So, so I return to uh, Ian Hodder's uh, paper, and in, in that specific book in 1978, he lists a lot of things about simulation. He says simulation, uh, as a way of modeling, does don't necessarily involve computer. That's the first thing. So the second, is simulations are inherently anti. That's my my summary. That's another case exact word, by the way. Uh, simulations are inherently anti-determinism, and in a way, anti-modeling. Simulation is anti-modeling. And the third, because the reason it's anti modeling, he's talking about anti, uh, he actually does a suggestion of uh, agent based modeling, but doesn't, they, they, didn't, they didn't have the word at the time, right? And the simulations move away from, gener uh, away from uh, generalization towards specific data. It's counterintuitive attempt at a concerted total complex system. That's what he, what he meant, like he, he said, is simulation is very, it's also an agent modeling kind of idea, but he does still have, have the right word. So simulation, not only experiment on data, but also on experimenters. It's similar to what Nicole Nelson did with the did with the mass modeling. And uh, simulation welcome confusions and contradictions. Simulations are inherently circular, if not a topological. That's the that's the negative about a similar because simulation even now we have to depend on the previous data. And those previous data, they, you got those data from within the discipline. So at only at, at that time you start to need to start seek seek external. Uh, resources. So I think we should set up a system when we do everything by ourselves. Then we move beyond to look at other disciplines and we borrow that again. So we don't have to sway from different theory. Because even in social theory oriented archaeology or in, in, in scientific oriented archaeology, uh, we can see often archaeologists follow the trend in terms of theory and the methods. Uh, you don't create a trend. But archaeology could have created a trend. So that's basically what. Thank you.